Well, at the cockpit, uh, I'm exploring almost uh, a tongue-in-cheek lecture, shall we say, um, where cricket and poetry inspiring each other. Prospero batting, Caliban bowling, and his cricket is cricket is cricket in your but from far it look like politics. You only need to think of a great work like Beyond the Boundary by C.L.R. James, the way he relates poetry to spectacle, to theater. Prospero invoking the name of W.G. Grace to preserve him from a bouncer to the face. You can take classic examples going right back to a commentator like John Arlott. As a little boy growing up and not having TV and listening to cricket commentary, um, without realizing it, I was becoming aware in a very painless way about metaphor, for example. When John Arlott says, a batsman pushes the ball gently along the carpet. When the Caribbean expression for a ball whizzing past a batsman's head becomes chin music, that's a wonderful compound metaphor, almost Anglo-Saxon, chin music. So I'm not speaking about the technicalities because I'll be out of my depth. But just the joy of the language of cricket, the use of metaphor, uh, the diction, the unfolding of the drama, the reflection of the ups and downs of fortune. I think it is the one sport that has inspired more literature and poetry than any other. And I think that's to do with the richness of the diction and the epic unfolding of the drama. Prospero wishing Shakespeare was the umpire. When Caliban see a red ball, he see fire rising with glorious uncertainty. Is cricket, is cricket, is cricket in your ricketics? But from far, it look like politics. So I will be doing that and relating the language of poetry to the language of cricket. So I hope you can make it. <laughs>